I would, like a, I would like to make a statement and ask each of you to listen carefully to what I have to say. I decided quite some time ago that I would like to end this last term as a member of this House on the backbench, as the Prime Minister can attest. We discussed this shortly after I announced I would not be recontesting the next election. I'm not resigning as your Speaker today or tomorrow, but rather I'm giving all of you notice of my plans for the future. As I said, I've been thinking about this for a long time and made the decision some time ago. I've been your Speaker for six years and two months over the 44th, 45th and this 46th Parliament. Being your Speaker is an incredible honour. I love the job and obviously what I'm saying now has been a very difficult decision. I know many of you appreciate just what a busy and responsible job it is. And, as you all know, it's been particularly so these last couple of years, keeping this House running, which has been vital, as well as all the other responsibilities of the job, which I can assure you are much more than question time. As, uh, as I said, you already know that I won't be contesting the next election. As your speaker, I get to speak, and let's be frank, as you know, I can speak quite a lot. However, as you also know, I don't have the opportunity to contribute in the House on behalf of my constituents in the way you do every sitting day. That's why in the final months of this parliament, I want to return to you on the floor of the House as the government member for Casey. I want to spend my remaining time contributing in the House and outside the House working exclusively for the people of Casey. Without their support in electing me, I wouldn't be in this place to be Speaker. To those on the back bench, can I say you play a critical role in bringing the issues of concern and priority in your electorates directly to this House and to ministers and shadow ministers. I simply want to rejoin you for the final period as a parliamentarian in this great House of Representatives. Accordingly, I plan to finish up as your speaker just after we return here in November and return to you on the floor of the House. At this stage, I plan to chair the Monday's proceedings on the 22nd of November before resigning and enabling you to elect your next speaker at the beginning of proceedings on Tuesday the 23rd of November. I will take the time to make some more extensive and reflective remarks and some thank yous after question time on the Monday when we return. And again, I don't want today to substitute uh, that uh, for obvious reasons. And you might want to say some nice things, but I'm still going to be uh, using 94A in question time in about 45 minutes. <laughs> As you're aware, a new Senate president was elected just last Monday, so it's important for the parliament that I take the next few weeks to work with him on a whole range of matters that we have joint responsibility for here in the building. I also want to give all members early notice of my decision so they can consider the vacancy. I've taken the time to outline my reasons, which are simple and clear. I want to finish on the backbench as a government backbencher and I want to speak in this House again and focus entirely on my electorate. It's not because I'm tired of the job. I doubt I would ever tire of it. It's certainly not because I'm tired of pulling ministers or members into line. I think you know I would never tire of that. I relish it. I just want to return to you. Let me say clearly if there is anyone within or outside this House that thinks my decision is the result of some disquiet I have with the government, you are completely wrong. That's why I'm pointing this out so directly now. If at any point in the last six years and two and a half months I had felt a decision or action of the House was a direct attack on my speakership, I hope you all know me well enough now to know I would have left the chair immediately. I have at all times sought to operate fairly, consistently and predictably to be a speaker for all of you. That's meant disciplining anyone I need to, even when it's a close friend. 
like the Prime Minister, who I've known for 20 years, or the Treasurer, who I've known for even longer, when he used to draft opinion pieces for other people rather than himself. <laughs> but we are dear friends, the Treasurer and I, and he's known about my plans uh, for an extensive period of time as well. As I've said, I thought about this over a long period of time. Indeed, had it not been for the responsibility I've had to the operation of the House during this COVID time, I would have been making this speech some time ago. Given my role and my approach to the speakership over the last six and a bit years, I will conduct myself in a way I believe befitting of a former speaker still in the House. So I have no plans to ask questions of ministers unless they're directly related to my constituents. Secondly, I have no plans to raise points of order or to point out sound and wise rulings, unless absolutely necessary. And I have no plans to interject. I thank you for your support for the time that I'm here, that's all of today, the coming weeks, and uh, in the chair today and on the, on the Monday when we return, I'll be enforcing the standing orders as I always have, possibly like never before. Thank you. <laughs> the Prime Minister. Well, thank you, Mr Speaker, and, and per your wishes, today is, is not the day when the Leader of the Opposition and I, the Leader of the House, Manager of Business, um, will sing your praises. That day will come and we come back uh, in November. But simply to say this, that I believe, Mr Speaker, that we have had the privilege to serve in this House at a time when this House has had its finest speaker in you. I know that is a view that is shared widely in this place. You are deeply respected. You have been a close friend and obviously will continue to be and a, a trusted confidant uh, for both of us. And I do want to wish you all the very best. I know you haven't arrived at this decision lightly, and I know it has driven your decision to do it, because you love this place. You love what it provides the opportunity for you to do. And you love doing it for the people you love in your electorate. And you want to return to them and, and to the forms of this house, as you would say, to be able to express that in the best way you possibly can. So we're very grateful. I'm very grateful for your friendship, your constant guidance and counsel, whether from there or elsewhere. <laughs> and uh, I wish you and all of your family all the very, very best, my friend. The Leader of the Opposition. Well, thanks uh, very much, Mr Speaker. And I rise to wish you well and to say that I respect your decision and uh, understand uh, how much uh, you care about uh, your electorate. And uh, indeed, uh, we first met uh, as uh, members of uh, the Health and Ageing Committee of the House of Representatives uh, a couple of decades ago now. That's right. And uh, since then, but particularly since uh, your rise to the speakership, uh, we have uh, now a friendship uh, based upon, I, I would hope, uh, mutual respect. Uh, certainly, in, in my case, that is there. I think that uh, the Speaker is an incredibly important role in this parliament. And, Mr Speaker, something that uh, a word that I would use to describe you, which I regard as an honourable word, is parliamentarian. Not everyone who comes in this place is a parliamentarian. You are. You respect the traditions and the history of the Westminster system. You have uh, been an outstanding speaker. Uh, you have been uh, selected in that position uh, twice unanimously, and who knows what might have happened uh, had you uh, stayed on in that position uh, in the future. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I, I've said on the record, uh, even prior to uh, your announcement that you weren't running again, that that was my position. I also think that uh, one of the things that you've understood is that uh, a good speaker assists the government because uh, order is, is there, but most importantly, uh, it uh, supports the respect for our political processes, our, our cherished democracy, which we should not take for granted. 
Many of the countries in our region, including ones we have important relationships with, are not democracies, and we should not take it for granted. Uh, we, should, uh, we should always, uh, always cherish it, and uh, you have been uh, one of the finest examples of parliamentarians uh, of your generation, and uh, I wish you well. I have more to say uh, at, the appropriate, uh, at the appropriate time when we return on the Monday. Thank you. The Leader of the House. Well, Mr Speaker, uh, just some brief remarks, uh, as you've requested. Can I join with uh, the fine words of uh, the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition uh, in wishing you well and thanking you for your service to this parliament and the sacrifice that you've made in the service to this parliament? Uh, Mr Speaker, wisely you've uh, delivered your words not as a ruling to the parliament uh, but merely as a statement because Although I've only been in this job a short period of time as Leader of the House, uh, I would be otherwise inclined to move a dissent in your ruling, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure there would be an unanimous position across the parliament uh, uh, to send whatever message we could to you to say that uh, uh, you will be sadly missed, and certainly the desire, I'm sure, of this parliament in any other circumstance for you to continue on. Um, Spithy, I consider you a dear friend, and we were flatmates 20 years ago, having come into the parliament in 2001, a long time ago. And the way in which you have conducted your affairs over that period of time has been reflected publicly over the course of the last six years, but was obvious to all of us from the first day that we met you. And it has been, in my experience, the case for this House that we have not had a better speaker over the course of those two decades. And that is uh, a great tribute to your intellect and skills and the capacity that you've brought to the position. Uh, I think the uh, obvious statement is that um, it's a tough job. There's no question about that, but the grace that you have demonstrated from that chair uh, is recognised by us all and uh, we'll have more uh, comments to make in relation uh, to your service to this parliament uh, when we come back in a couple of weeks, as was pointed out before. But if you had to script the end to what has been a graceful period of your service as speaker, a class act, you couldn't really script a closing chapter uh, more perfectly than this the desire for you to step down from that chair and to represent the interests in a very genuine way of the people who have elected you. And I know that you're someone who takes that very seriously. It's a solemn honour to be in this place as a member of parliament, as a parliamentarian, as the Leader of the Opposition pointed out, and that you would give the closing chapter to them, I think says a lot about you and uh, about the class that you've brought to the position of Speaker. Uh, and um, I can't uh, embellish, uh, Mr Speaker, because I know that we'll have no influence on you at all in question time that's almost upon us uh, or over your uh, enduring days uh, uh, in that chair. Um, I wish you every success in the next stage of life and um, we'll make further comments uh, in due course. Thank you. The Manager of Opposition Business. Uh, thanks, Mr Speaker. I join with the Prime Minister, the Leader of the Opposition and the Leader of the House uh, in saying that uh, you'd never win a vote for this decision in this House. Uh, and the Leader of the House just offered a pathway for a complete unity ticket that we don't <laughs> find very often. Uh, the, none of us know every Speaker back in terms of how they chaired in every way back for the 120 years of this Parliament. And so in working out best and fairest awards, it's not an easy thing to do, but there's this simple fact. There's only been one other speaker in the history of this parliament who's been elected three times, and those elections have never been contested. There's only one other speaker in the history of this parliament who's been nominated and seconded by both sides of the chamber. Now, I don't think any words speak as loudly as the evidence. Uh, and the evidence for best and fairest is strong. And the most important thing that I think we this House always needs is a speaker who presides over debate but doesn't become the focus of the debate. 
uh, that allows the parliament to then deal with the issues before us. Uh, that has been the case the whole way through, uh, and we wish you well. We'll have more to say later, but if you ever want a parliamentary endorsement for leaving, it's not going to happen. Well, thank you, Prime Minister, Leader of the Opposition, Leader of the House and Manager of Opposition Business for those very, very generous remarks. And uh, as I said, I, I haven't gone yet. And uh, I'll uh, have a little bit of lunch and come back for question time. And uh, I planned this so that we'd run into the 90 second statements at uh, <laughs> 1.30. But uh, no, thank you uh, one and all. And I'll be back for question time. And, and, uh, and as I said, I'll be enforcing the rules as I always have. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, can you make the...